number one asks us if this is an identity. And then it just wants us to show or explain our reasoning. So remember, an identity means that the two sides are equivalent to one another. So we can just take this right-hand side and we can multiply it and see if it equals out to a to the sixth plus b to the sixth. If it does, then we have an identity. So I'm just going to draw um, a table here, a two by three since we're multiplying a binomial times a trinomial and so i'm just going to write the um, a squared b squared on the side so we have a squared plus b squared times a to the fourth minus a squared b squared and then plus b to the fourth so then we'll go ahead and multiply um, these polynomials together. So a squared times a to the fourth is a to the sixth. a squared times negative a squared b squared. So we're going to get negative a squared and a squared is a to the fourth. And then we have the b squared. a squared times b to the fourth is just a squared b to the fourth. Then we'll multiply for this bottom row. So a to the fourth times b squared. And I just like to write the a's first and then the b's. So I'm going to write a to the fourth b squared. It's easier to find like terms that way. b squared times negative a squared b squared. So we'll have the negative a squared and then b squared and b squared is b to the fourth. Then b squared times b to the fourth is b to the sixth. So then we'll look through and find our like terms here. So remember, like terms need to have the same variable, same exponent. So this one is an A4B2, and so is this one. So those are like terms. Then we have um, an A squared B4, and we have an A squared B4 here. So those are like terms. So when we take this polynomial out, we'll have a to the sixth, then a positive a squared b squared minus, sorry, a to the fourth b squared minus a to the fourth b squared. So we have a one a four b two and a negative one a four b two. So those cancel. Then we have a negative a squared b four and a positive a squared b four. So those are going to cancel. And then we have that plus b to the sixth. So when we multiply these two polynomials together, they equal a to the sixth plus b to the sixth, which is the same as over here. So these are an identity because both sides are identical. All right, in number two, it says to match each lettered expression with the number of an expression equivalent to it. So here we're adding fractions. So we want to make sure to get a common denominator. And remember when we're adding fractions, we add the tops when the bottoms are the same. So this 1 over A, we're going to need to multiply by this denominator. So we're going to multiply it on both top and bottom. So then this one is going to be A plus 1 over A times A plus 1. Then this fraction, we're going to multiply both top and bottom by a, the other term's denominator. So then we'll have a times a plus 1 on the bottom. So we can see those are the same. And then a times 1 on top is a. So now we're going to add the tops with the bottoms the same. So the bottom is just going to be a times a plus 1. And we could just look and see if there's any um, denominators that look like that. And we don't see it. Um, because it's actually multiplied in. So they did a times a is a squared and a times one is a. So let's look for that denominator because if there's only one of them, we would know already, but we see it here and we see it here. So let's deal with the top. So now we're going to add the tops because the bottoms are the same. So we're going to do a plus one plus a. So we'll be able to add these like terms. So we have a plus a is 2a and that plus 1. So 2a plus 1, that's number 3. So this one um, goes to number 3. 
Um, so then let's look for these similar denominators because we only had one other denominator that looked like that. And now we'll know that that's the common denominator. So if we look here to C, C has the A and the A plus one. So that must be the other one. So this must be number two. So without having to do the full work, we can kind of figure out what it is. So working smarter, not harder. So now in this one, we'll be able to multiply this side by A over A. So we get A times A plus one on top and A times A minus one on bottom. Plus now over here, we're gonna multiply by A minus one to top and bottom. So we're gonna have A plus one times A minus one on top. And then we have A times A minus one on bottom. So now that we have common denominators, we can add the tops because the bottoms are the same. So again, I'm just gonna start on the bottom here. So look and see if you have an, any of these in factored form, which we don't. So let's distribute the A. So it's gonna be A squared minus A. So do any of these answers have A squared minus A and we only see it in number four. So without even having to deal with the top, we know that this is number four. All right, then these last ones. Um, so we've got an A minus one, A plus one. So over here, we're gonna multiply by A plus one to top and bottom. So the top is gonna be A times A plus one. And the bottom is gonna be A plus one, A minus one. And then we have this minus here, but so I'm just gonna put that with the negative one on top. And so here we're gonna multiply by the A minus one to top and bottom. So this is gonna be the negative one times A minus one on top, and we have the A plus one times A minus one on bottom. So now we've got the denominator of A plus one, A minus one, which if we look at our leftover choices, we know that that's gonna multiply out to A squared minus one. We do see that that's a difference of squares. So we know the middles are gonna drop out here because it'll be A times A is A squared. Then it'll be minus A and plus A for the middle and then one times negative one there. But we obviously have to figure out the top here since we've got two choices. So we'll distribute here and we get A squared plus A and then distribute here and we get negative A and negative one times negative one is plus one. So these like terms of A minus A will cancel. So that's zero. So we just get A squared plus one for this one. And that is number five. So D is number five and that leaves number one for E. All right, for number three, it says, um, let X squared plus five X plus four times X plus two equal a times x plus one. So if this is an identity, what's a possible expression for a? So what I'm gonna do is take a look at this and factor it, because if we see an x plus one factor in here, that could be helpful. So um, this has an a value of one. So we'll look at the factors of four that add to five. And the factors of four that add to five are four and one. And so then we also have that X plus two in there that we started with. So now this is equal to A times X plus one. So now that's nice because we see this X plus one factor on both sides. So now we know that this other stuff needs to be what A is equal to. So we already have the X plus one, so the other stuff has to equal A. So we know that A would equal um, X plus four times X plus two. And you could just leave it like that. You could also multiply it out if you wanted to. So you could say that A equals X squared um, plus six X plus eight. So it'd be X times X, two X and four X gives you that six X and then four times two gives you the eight. 
Number four, what are the points of intersection between the graphs? So remember that intersections are where the two functions are equal. So we're looking at where f of x equals g of x. So we'll set these equal to each other. So it's where x plus 6 times 2x plus 1 equals 2x plus 1. And when we see that these share a common factor, we're just going to minus that common factor over um, so that it's on the same side. So we're just going to take and subtract that whole thing. So just put parentheses around it and subtract it from both sides so that we can factor it out. So now I see it's in common here, so I'm just gonna take it out, and when I factor out 2x minus one, what's left? So when I factor it out of here, I have an x plus six left. And when I factor it out of here, I have this negative one left. So then we're able to um, simplify this out here. So we have 2x minus 1, and here we have x, and then 6 minus 1 is 5. And now we have these multiplied to equal 0, so we can just set them each equal to 0 and solve. So we'll add 1 to both sides, and then we'll divide by 2. And then here we'll just subtract 5 to both sides. So these are our two answers. Um, for where these graphs intersect. So x equals um, 1 half and negative 5. Number 5, identify all values of x that make the equation true. So when we just have a fraction equal to another fraction, we can just cross multiply. So we have x plus 5 times x plus 5. And then we can multiply the x plus 11 up times 1 is just going to be x plus 11. So then we'll expand this. So x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Five, 5 times x is 5x. And then 5 times 5 is 25. And then equals that x plus 11. Combine our like terms over here so we get 10x. Um, and then we solve that equals x plus 11. So now we have an x squared term. So let's bring these terms over. So let's subtract x from both sides and let's subtract 11 from both sides. So then we get x squared plus 9x plus 14 equals 0. And then we can factor this. The a value is 1, so we can just find the factors of 14 that add to 9. Um, so that's 2 and 7. So 2 times 7 is 14. 2 plus 7 is 9. So then we'll split this and set each of these equal to 0. So subtract 2 from both sides and we get negative 2. Subtract 7 from both sides and we get negative 7. Then remember, you want to check both of these into the denominator of the original. Do any of these give us division by zero? And they don't. So these are both our solutions. Part B is just fractions set equal to each other again. So we'll cross multiply. So we'll do 2x minus 3 times x plus 5. And then x times 14 for the other side gives us 14x. So let's expand this. So we're going to get 2x squared when we do 2x times x. 2x times 5 is 10x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And then equals the 14x. Combine our like terms here. So 10x minus 3x is positive 7x, and then we have the minus 15 equals 14x. So then we'll bring this 14x over since we've got an x squared term, so we're going to need it equal to 0. So 7x minus 14x is negative 7x, and then we have negative um, 15 equals 0. 
So now this one um, has an A value that's bigger than one. So I'm gonna factor this in the box. So I'm just gonna draw out a two by two box with a circle in the middle. And I'm gonna put this polynomial along um, the diagonal. So two X squared minus seven X and minus 15. So then I'll multiply the first term and the last term. So 2x squared times negative 15 is negative 30x squared. And now I want to find the factors of negative 30 that add to negative 7. So that's going to be negative 10x and positive 3x. And then you can put these in either of the boxes. So I'm going to put the negative 10x here and the positive 3x here. Then you're going to factor out the common factor along the top. So both of these divide by two and they divide by x. So now you're gonna go what times two x equals two x squared? So that's gonna be x, so two x times x is two x squared. Two x times negative five is the negative 10 x. And then x times three gives us three x. And then I like to check this last box too. Three times negative five is negative 15. So this polynomial factors to x minus five times two x plus three. So now we'll split these and set them equal to zero. So x minus five equals zero or x plus three equals zero. So x equals five. Over here we'll subtract three from both sides and then we'll divide by two, so negative three halves. So then we'll go to our original equation um, and we got x equals five and negative three halves. And we'll check, do either of those make the denominator here zero? And the answer to that is no. So both of these are solutions. Number six, match each expression in the lettered list with the number of an expression it's equivalent to. So let's go ahead and look at some of these um, and see if there's some that we recognize. So I recognize B as a difference of squares. So this one's just gonna, the middles are gonna drop out. So we're gonna be at X squared minus 36. So that's number three. Okay, so B is number three. Then I also see this one is a difference of squares that's not factored. So this one's gonna factor down to x squared and six with a plus and a minus. So I see that in number two. So then we can go ahead and look um, at some others. So this um, top one is actually one of those formulas that you learned where if it's x minus one, and then you have the three, two, one, and then none for the variable, this is actually gonna multiply out to um, the exponent one higher than this, so x to the fourth minus one. So that was something you looked at, so that's number five. So that was a formula you learned, um, or an identity you learned. And if you don't remember it, you can put this in the box and multiply it out and you'd get this as well. So now when we look at these two, okay, think of some strategies and look at what's left. So what we have left is something that has an X cubed term and something that is factored. So this one's gonna equal out to something X squared. So this one's not gonna have an X cubed. So which of these is the X cubed term gonna cancel out. So not in this one, but in this one, we're going to get the X cubed here and then we're going to subtract it. So this one down here is going to be a quadratic. So this one has to be number four without us actually going through the multiplication, which leaves us with C being number one. So that's just some strategies that maybe you don't have to actually multiply these all the way out, but you certainly can to match them as well.